Over the past few years, consumers and the RV industry alike have been grappling with service issues. It's perhaps surprising then that very few RV dealerships have taken the route of focusing on a single brand. Yeah, there's a handful of exceptions, such as the rare Airstream exclusive dealer, but by and large, dealerships typically offer a medley of RV types, from trailers to camper vans to big Class A motorhomes, from a multitude of manufacturers. The reasoning behind this could be due to the sheer variety of brands available, with over 200 RV brands gracing the U.S. market. Dealerships often hold exclusivity over a certain area, making them the go-to place for a range of different types of RVs, and no one else around can sell that brand. It's a different situation than car dealerships, which frequently sell models from a single brand or a select group of brands under the same parent company. This variety at RV dealerships introduces a layer of competition to the marketplace, especially in areas where dealership options are limited. However, it's always been my belief that certain RV brands could greatly benefit from having their own dedicated dealerships. Let's take Keystone as an example. They have a broad range of trailers, from compact travel trailers to top-tier fifth wheels, all made using similar parts and manufacturing techniques. The advantage of a Keystone-only dealership are numerous. Having a deep understanding of the brand, salespeople can provide more detailed and accurate information to prospective buyers. Service technicians could specialize in Keystone models, leading to quicker and more efficient repairs. Moreover, the dealership could keep all necessary parts in stock, eliminating the wait time for parts to be shipped. This focus on a single brand could significantly enhance the customer experience compared to a dealership juggling dozens of brands at once. As it turns out, this shift towards single brand dealerships might be on the horizon. Several of the RV industry's leading brands are set to launch exclusive dealerships across the U.S. In fact, one has already swung its doors open, the Jayco Morgan Hill in California. This dealership offers a variety of Jayco models, from the Seismic to the Jayfeather, and it's dedicated entirely to just Jayco products. It seems like a smart move to me. However, it's important not to make the assumption that Jayco Morgan Hill is run by Jayco. It's actually a front for Camping World. Camping World is the largest RV dealership chain in the U.S. with approximately 200 stores. Despite their size, they've earned a somewhat bitter reputation among consumers and those within the RV industry too, although they're rarely willing to express it publicly. Known for advertising the lowest prices, Camping World often springs additional fees on customers when it's time to buy, charging thousands for pre-delivery inspection and battery installation. They're also notorious for their 20-year RV loans, enticing buyers with deceptively low monthly payments on even entry-level travel trailers, despite the fact that the RV is unlikely to outlast the loan. It's not my intention here to add to the chorus of anti-camping world voices. I believe in presenting a balanced, fact-based view. Just because you've heard that the local camping world dealership isn't up to par doesn't necessarily mean that the dealership across the street is a paragon of virtue. On its own merits, though, Camping World has built a negative reputation among a segment of buyers, myself included. Their sales tactics are certainly something to behold, reminiscent of a 70s used car dealership. Yet many customers have had a positive experience at Camping World, just as many have had negative ones at other dealerships. Additionally, Camping World is an excellent source for RV parts and supplies. What does raise my eyebrows is Camping World portraying themselves as something they're not like your friendly neighborhood Jayco dealership. It's worth noting that Camping World is currently on an acquisition spree. In fact, Camping World's entire strategy over the past couple decades has been acquisitions of their competitors. The company has announced plans to increase its store count by 50% in the next five years with a goal of having stores in all of the lower 48 states. This would allow them to sell online and deliver RVs across the country. A questionable idea given the potential logistical complications and customer service issues that could arise, but this aggressive strategy could potentially lead to a monopolization of the market, which might result in decreased competition and increased prices for consumers. One aspect of this strategy involves the acquisition of smaller dealerships, many of which don't have the necessary footprint to become Camping World stores. However, these smaller dealerships could be transformed into single brand outlets, expanding Camping World's acquisition potential 
and allowing the company to buy competitors in areas where they already have a dealership. And that's not just a hunch. Camping World has confirmed this in a press release, stating that the strategy, quote, widens the acquisition funnel to include dealers with a smaller real estate format or those located near an established Camping World dealership where we have access to a multitude of brands that compete in the same segment. The company plans to open branded dealerships with various manufacturers in 10 different markets as part of its first wave of this strategy. It's yet to be seen how this shift will impact the RV industry and the customer experience at the dealerships. While the focus on individual brands could potentially improve the level of expertise and service provided, it will largely depend on how Camping World implements this strategy and manages these brand-specific dealerships. Potential benefits for customers could include a more focused and knowledgeable sales team and service staff and possibly more efficient repairs due to the specialization in a single brand. This could lead to a more streamlined and satisfactory customer experience, particularly to customers devoted to a single RV brand. That's why there are already Airstream only dealerships out there because Airstream has a huge following. There are also some potential drawbacks to this strategy. Customers who are undecided on a brand or looking to compare different brands might find a brand specific dealership limiting. Additionally, if Camping World does not address the common complaints about customer service and support, the same issues are likely to persist in these brand specific locations. In terms of the wider impact on the industry, this move could be a game changer. If successful, it could prompt the other large RV dealership chains to consider a similar strategy, some of which have a more reasonable reputation. On the other hand, it might also create challenges for independent RV dealers who don't have the resources to compete with these brand-specific dealerships' scale and branding power. A shift towards brand-specific RV dealerships could potentially reshape the RV industry in significant ways, impacting both customers and other dealers. The success or failure will largely hinge on its execution, and observing how it unfolds in the coming years is going to be interesting. Just make sure you know who you're buying from. That's it for this video. We hope you'll click the like button if you got something out of this. Subscribe if you want more like this. Make sure to check out the RV Miles podcast, and I hope you'll join us for the RV Miles homecoming in Amana, Iowa. It's a big rally that we're going to have early October this year. All the details are in the description. We'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.